intimate conversations with wedding professionals as they share their stories, insights, and tips from inside the wedding industry. We'll chat about how to be authentic and that it's okay not to be perfect or run your business like someone else's Instagram. Let's dive into the privilege it is to serve our clients and discover the talented creatives that make up our community. When we share what we know and who we are, we better serve our couples as a wedding day team, as well as each other. Simply put, be Fabo. Now here's your host, Bobby Brinkman. Hey everybody, happy wedding Wednesday. It is episode 34 here on the podcast. And I'm thrilled today because I'm actually on location and um, I love going on location to do these interviews, especially when I have multiple guests. And I really do wish that y'all could see what I see right now sitting at this interview. It is absolutely stunning. I am thrilled to be invited and sitting over at Cedar Lodge on Honey Creek. It is a going to be a new venue opening up April of 2020 here in coastal Georgia. And it is draped in the majestic beauty of live oaks, dripped with Spanish moss everywhere. Um, it is situated along the uh, river, um, these golden, golden marshes. And it is going to be a premier full-service venue. And let me tell you, the owner, Tommy, uh, Tommy McGraw, is with us today. And he, I think he's lying to me. I think he's opened up 500 venues, him and his wife, uh, across the country. And is just keeping it really quiet because this guy is not skipping a beat. Uh, he's listening to wedding pros, he's listening to engaged couples, and he is building a wonderful group of situations and settings here on his acreage. And um, it is, is he's going to be able to do so many things, and he's listening. And the fact that he's listening is um, just really, really wonderful um, because he's taking into consideration what it's like to be a wedding vendor as well as being an engaged couples. Um, they are going to have a venue that can easily accommodate up to 300 people. It's, you know, close to 2,300 square feet of air conditioning for Southern Georgia. So you won't have to worry when it's really, really hot outside. You have opportunities to get married outdoors. You have opportunities to have your uh, reception outdoors, but they also have indoor, indoor facilities and y'all, they have parking. You won't have, you have on-site parking that's going to be just off the property a little bit. So none of the cars will be in all the photos. So photographers everywhere, sing your praises, Tommy, for doing this. Um, just so many things. And you can go to their uh, website at uh, cedarlodgegeorgia.com and see more about their progress and what all they have to offer. And then you also follow them on Instagram, um, which is just amazing as well. And you can follow them over at Cedar Lodge on Honey Creek on Instagram. Don't worry, everybody. Tina's going to have these links in show notes. But uh, as I mentioned, Tommy's sitting with me today. He's the owner. Tiffany Davis is going to be the woman behind it all. Um, and let me tell you guys, she is engaged couples. You are going to be so put at ease with Tiffany's help here. She is going to be on site throughout the weddings. Uh, so wedding vendors and wedding professionals, let me explain to you. They, she will be offering wedding services, wedding planning services. But if other wedding planners are hired and they totally want that to happen as well, she will still be on site as the venue person. She will stay out of the way. But in case there's a light switch problem or there is a bathroom problem, guess what, guys? We get to still do our jobs, and Tiffany is going to be there to take care of all those venue issues. Um, and she is just going to be a wealth of information and a wonderful resource for engaged couples that are looking. And they're already booking for uh, 2020, guys. Uh, they're already getting booked for April and May. Um, do follow them on Instagram. They have a bunch of specials coming on and they have some wonderful things that they're doing, um, to make saying I do in coastal Georgia, even more fabled than it already is. Joining us in the interview also is Becca from H2O Creative and she is their uh, marketing director, uh, for this lovely venue. And let me tell you guys, she's doing an amazing job too. So she shared her inputs on, on how social media is helping this venue get started. And Tiffany's going to share all the wonderful things about having a person on the end of that contact form. And Tommy's just going to be uh, filling us in a little bit on how he got started in the progress and the future plans of this amazing venue. So I'm really, really thrilled to bring you um, these three dynamic people who are full of passion and excitement and they are just cannot wait to bring um, a lovely, lovely venue 
And let me tell you, it's going to be more than a venue. It's going to be a community gathering space. Um, it's going to be a place that you just feel calm when you go there. So aside from wedding events, I think they're going to do some really, really great things for the community. So again, you know, I'm thrilled to be sitting here at uh, Cedar Lodge on Honey Creek. The view is amazing, but let me tell you, the people sitting across from me are some amazing souls, and they are going to do wonderful things and are such a welcome addition to the wedding industry here in coastal Georgia. So without further ado, everybody, please welcome Tommy, Tiffany, and Becca to the podcast. All right, listeners, we're thrilled to be back here. I am sitting in a wonderful house on an amazing new venue. It has nothing to do with the venue, but they're very nicely letting us use uh, their house. I am sitting at Cedar Lodge on Honey Creek. I'm here with uh, three fabulous individuals. I'm going to let them introduce themselves to you listeners uh, so you can hear their voices. So when we ask questions, you'll know who's talking and all that good stuff. So let's start with you, Tom. What is your role here at this lovely venue? Well, Bobby, my name is Tommy McGraw. I'm the owner here at Cedar Lodge. My wife, Corey, and I, uh, this project started about four years ago. Uh, we decided to start a new business, uh, wanted to pursue a wedding bring, uh, venue, had some issues when we were getting married, finding the proper venue. And uh, it's been something we've wanted to do. We found a beautiful piece of property, been blessed to uh, be able to acquire it and build on it. And uh, here we are four years later, it's finally starting to come to fruition. And kind of tell our listeners that are listening in, we're down here in the Golden Isles, Camden County, kind of give everybody a general idea where this venue is sitting. Absolutely. So technically we're inside Waverly, Georgia, which is about, about 20 minutes outside of St. Simons Island, just south of Brunswick. Uh, we sit on Deepwater Honey Creek, which offers us beautiful expansive views of the intercoastal, the Sydney Lanier Bridge and all the islands. Uh, like I said, we're pretty convenient, about 15 to 20 minutes away from the islands in the city of Brunswick. Uh, we sit on about 30 acres of waterfront property, as I said. Uh, we have a beautiful lodge being constructed right now for weddings, uh, indoor and outdoor reception and ceremony areas, a barn, uh, lodging and amenity area, are both coming to fruition later, uh, later next year. So and isn't it always project. that way too? It's always that way. We end up in the wedding industry. I think a lot of us end up in the industry because there was a need. Something happened at our weddings or something happened at a friend's wedding. And all of a sudden, I think that is of a small business in general, a niche was there. And Absolutely. so we found a need. Right. So let's fill that need. And so obviously down here, we're a very destination market. So we need more and more venues. So I can't tell you listeners, you guys are going to be thrilled. Uh, if you're planning a destination wedding in this area, you're going to be thrilled with what's coming your way. Introduce us to the person sitting to your right. Absolutely, so to my right we have Tiffany Davis. Uh, Tiffany is going to be our Director of Operations. She'll be managing the the day-to-day procedures, meeting with clients, brides, grooms, etc. Tiffany's husband Marty and I have been uh, best friends for quite a while. That's how uh, we came to know each other. So she's going to be a great fit. I'm optimistic and hopefully she won't screw it up too bad. Uh, (laughs) I'm happy to have her and I think she's going to be an incredible asset to, to Cedar Lodge. So on that, Tiffany, tell us how your background, have you been in the wedding industry before, hospitality industry? How did Jess falling into his, uh, the best friend status here in the family come to fruition? Well, thanks, Bobby. I'm really excited uh, to be a part of this exciting new venture. I've not spent a lot of time in the wedding industry alone. I've spent the majority of my career in higher education, actually. So I've um, been working at uh, colleges and universities across the United States ever since about 2013. I've always been a huge component of customer service. When Tommy first approached me with this, you know, I laughed it off and was like, I'm excited to see your venue. <laughs> so, Wait, because I deal with children and drunk adults, young yes. college kids every weekend. <laughs> Let me add the wedding. Right, yeah. absolutely. I'm perfectly prepared to be the person to moderate all the people running around drunk. Yes. Right, I've had enough experience, <laughs> exactly. here, some practice. So um, it really came, when Tommy approached me, he just wanted, I think, somebody that he could trust and right. somebody who has a business sense. So I have a, a undergraduate degree in business leadership and then a master's in education. And so I think a lot of those components come in. My mom and I have always enjoyed event planning and party planning, um, wedding venues, things of that nature. And we've probably done double digits weddings just for friends, just right. for fun. So I think that part of that is a hobby and that hobby is now becoming a career. So well, exactly. And that's again, passion and drive make this industry so much better. And again, passion and drive, small business. Yep. And introduce the person sitting to your right. So this is Becca. She joins us from H2O. They have been doing just a fantastic job with all of our marketing, social media, uh, photography. So we can't thank them enough for everything obviously they've provided for us. We're excited to have them on board. So Becca, your role as marketing director for this venue, what are some of the things right off the bat before we have a building and before we have any weddings here, What are some of the things you and your company are doing to let our brides and our couples know that this venue is coming? So, sorry, 
Um, uh, we started with social media right off the bat, um, and we wanted to have a really strong presence and let everyone know that this wonderful venue was coming, but we also wanted to market it in a way that kind of gave brides especially a way to look at it like um, it's already here. This is what your special day could be. Right. So we wanted to definitely market it as like kind of a finished package, all in one. Um, yeah, just a beautiful, great coastal she didn't have to be on the islands, which right. is a big thing that we hear just, you know, in our day to day lives, just friends getting married. I'm 31. You know, uh, I don't necessarily want to have to get married on Jekyll or St. Simons, right. um, but I still want this really cool, coastal, beautiful venue. And so we wanted to we wanted to lead with that vision. And, and you find I think, you know, all of us that have been doing this in our various stage of career, social media, especially Instagram is where couples are gonna find this first. You start building that buzz, and I know at mm -hmm. H2O, you guys are all about the buzz and what you guys create. Yeah. So what, going down the pipe a little bit, as this progresses, are we gonna have some behind the scenes stories? What's your yeah. kind of plan, if you don't mind sharing some of that? Uh, yeah, so behind the scenes, definitely, but I think we also wanna kinda of show um, from start to finish, not just like, you know, Here's a glimpse behind the scenes, but here is step one to the finished products, the I do's. Um, and, and we want to do that with mini sessions, but we also want to do that with real brides. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And just kind of showing it. And so, again, listeners, um, this is an area that's highly uh, destination. Um, we're about an hour, 10 minutes from Savannah, and we're just literally about an hour up from Jacksonville. So, we're centrally located. And that's why we're kind of a mecca down here. Again, we offer historic venues. We have, you know, beach venues. One of the things that um, I think maybe Tom will ask you a little about, what was one of the things that attracted to this property? And since you and your wife had trouble getting married, what was one of the things that you wanted to make sure you could offer couples when they came here? Was it all in one location, multiple options on the venue? What's some of the things that you guys looked into preparing this venue? As far as the property is concerned, I think just the, I mean, it is absolutely a billion dollar beautiful view. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to find any location, let alone a wedding venue uh, in Glen County or in Southeast coastal Georgia that can offer just this beautiful expansive view and all the amenities we have. Uh, you know, there's some beautiful views in a couple of places in St. Simon's and Jekyll Island Hotel, uh, but we are able to capture this view uh, and create a whole lot of value because we're not attached to a resort or another entity which leads us to, to having charges higher prices. Uh, so we can we can offer a whole lot and create a whole lot of value for a bride uh, and her family and friends. So Tiffany, that'll come into like customization. Uh, maybe explain to our listeners, you know, again, everybody, this is, we're in entry stages, but I'm telling you, these three people here, you know, got their game together. They know what they're doing. Somebody 37 years in this industry have seen a lot of venue startups. I'm telling you, this place is, is gonna be amazing. They're doing it right from go. So Tiffany, some of the things, what's some of the things that you're going to be able to offer couples when they come here? Can we run it for the week? Can we do single days? Is it all yours? Parking? Give us some of the dirt. Absolutely. So on our webpage, you'll see that we have several different packages. As with any venue, you're going to have packages. But the good thing about the way that we're going to run this venue and about how everything is going to be in-house and we essentially are making our own rules is that anything can be customizable. We can, if you want to go with none of the packages and literally build everything from scratch, I'm going to be the one that's going to walk you through exactly what that looks like and make sure that you have everything you want or don't want. And so although we do have those basic packages online, anywhere from you know our basic all the way up to all-inclusive, what you want is what you're gonna get. And I think that that's important to know. Again, we're not tied to anything, it's just us. So you're allowed to bring outside caterers or we'll provide a caterer for you. And so it's very dependent upon what you want. And I think that sometimes brides want people to just make the decisions for them. Right. And sometimes brides want to have every decision crossed with dotted the I's and crossed the T's. And so it's really gonna be just exactly what they want coming in as a bride or a groom. And you're also associated with the Golden Isles Wedding Association. So that means you're working closely with local wedding vendors that not only live here, but service our area. So are they going to kind of be where you start with vendors to supply to your couples? And then also, you know, for other vendors that come in here, will there be a set of rules for other vendors that come in so that it only it protects your property and protects the couple? But you also can say, hey, look, we have a group of vendors here that are going to show up and do the job and you don't have to worry about logistics. 
So what's some of the things that you'll be able to offer vendor-wise to your couples that come? Absolutely. So, of course, we are part of the Gold Niles Wedding Association group. And so all of those are what we were going to call preferred vendors. So all of them will be preferred vendors because we know they're going to show up. The quality of work is going to be spectacular. And again, our brides and grooms, our vendors, won't have to worry about that. Uh, but then we also have the ability to uh, approve other vendors. And so we have on our webpage where people can go and submit an application to become a preferred, preferred vendor. We do our process on the back end to ensure that they're going to provide our customers with the very best satisfaction exactly. and then we will then post them on our website and provide that list um, because it's really what's best for that person coming in what's best for that customer and what's best for that vendor so you're gonna have to know those people to know the fit and that's what we're gonna try and provide and so when couples start looking at you and right now they can go to the website so they're gonna get a, a big chunk of information um, and again everybody Tina will link all these information into the show notes and we'll get a reminder at the end but if you're not taking notes Tina will link back to the website when you go to the website, you'll be able to start looking and selecting some plans. So when I hit that contact button, who's getting that information? You know, that's something as soon as Tommy brought me on, I went to my first uh, marketing meeting and I said, listen, I am so aggravated. I got married uh, the same year Tommy did and I'm so aggravated that I was getting these robo responses and putting something into a website, never hearing back and just not knowing who I was talking to. This was such going to be such a huge part of right. my story with my spouse. And I wanted to have someone, a real person involved. And so anytime you do anything through our website, it's going to come directly to me. So yeah. um, the email it goes to is Tiffany at CedarLodgeGeorgia.com. Uh, and so it's really important for me to make sure that they know who I am. That exactly. I'm, I'm going to be the voice in the face of Cedar Lodge. And so that was one of the things that was what I like to call non-negotiable. I was like, I want people to know who is behind this venue. Um, for accountability, but also so that they have a real person. Exactly. So the number you'll find on my business cards and our brochures is my cell phone number. Perfect. We don't have an office phone. Now if it rolls to voicemail, we'll right. give you a call back. But it's it's going to be that personal experience. And I think that's one of the things that's going to set us apart from other venues. Well, right, because couples want to know that you're investing in them. Absolutely. And the number one thing a bride or a groom or even any event person wants to know is, who am I talking to on the other end? Now that leads me into this question. Are you going to be on site the entire time? Will you be here from the minute they check in to the minute they leave? What's you guys' process or how do you see your role on that day? Yeah, so I will be here um, on site the entire time. If they bring in a wedding planner, um, I will just work with that wedding planner to make sure that they have everything that they need. If they want us to have a wedding planner or have us plan the wedding, we'll be happy to be there. So I will be managing all those things putting out fires, I guess, exactly. to say, li not literal fires, but right. putting putting out those things that sometimes um, can get out of hand, making sure the caterers have the space that they need, and try to assure that everything is organized in, in a manner that's going to make it just a spectacular, relaxing day for the customers. And so I think that that's what's so important. Well, and that's the thing. As a wedding vendor myself, I can tell you while I love going out to venues like this that are set apart from everything, my biggest fear is where's the venue person? Mm -hmm. Because... It's not a secret, uh, I'm sure along with other vendors that are listening in, but engage couples, this is a reason why you hire a professional, is imagine me being left, and it's happened, it will be in my book, Bride Wrangler, one day, you know, the power going out because a band plugged something in and there was no venue person, and so here is Bobby, the photographer, going along the circuit boxes, trying to get it to come back on. Now, at any moment, I could have blown up your venue. But nobody was there because they just wanted to sell the space. They weren't committed in the quality of events that happened in their space. So having you here in the back should make every vendor able to do their job better. And again, you're going to have little things that you might they'll say, oh, now I'm not Miss Wedding Planner A. It's great that, that you're setting up over there, but let me tell you another thing. At sunset, the sun sets over here because... We all don't know the area, and down here, it's called the Golden Isles for a reason, folks. You want to take advantage of this golden light that comes through here. So having somebody on site, so you're right, that's totally going to set you apart. So Becca, on that back end, how updating on the websites? I mean, are you going to be showing um, real weddings? Are we going to be able to show some uh, things that are happening once it gets built and going? Are you going to be maintaining yeah, and keeping that definitely, current? Definitely, definitely we hope to. Um, update if brides are willing to showcase their wedding on the website right. and social we would love to share that um, uh, yeah so definitely and, that, and, and that's the key and, you know brides you know you're gonna be able to get to Tiffany so when Tiffany says hey share some pictures of social media let's get those out so we can help sh share mm -hmm. this venue with everybody else and everybody wants definitely. their five minutes of fame 
So Tom, it kind of goes back into, you know, we're kind of talking a little bit and we, about what's being built, but let's take our listeners past April. Where, what other things, aside from the building that we're sitting next to, mm-hmm. that is, guys, it's amazing. You're going to see some stories on Instagram later. Aside from that main building, what else is going on this property when you come in the door? So come April 1st, when we officially open our doors to weddings and events, we'll have the, the main lodge, main reception and uh, event hall. Uh, we'll also bring, uh, be bringing a barn into the situation. Now, I, I use the term barn lightly. It's going to be a very right. uh, classy, very sophisticated structure, if you will. Um, that can act, you know, as a small venue on its own, low country boils, small parties, things of that nature, as well as a, a, a beautiful photography uh, standpoint, maybe for a bride looking for a more rustic venue right. for pictures, if you will. Um, tons of landscaping, a lot of stuff still going on, uh, a lot of outdoor areas still to come. Uh, that'll take us in the next spring. Now, hopefully next winter, uh, we'll be on track to have our lodging and amenity facility uh, complete. That lodging facility will incorporate about eight or nine cabins. Um, that will house 16 to 18 people. Uh, we'll also be doing a swimming pool, hot tub. Yoga so again, studio. here we go. You're, we're over here in this area. I'm, I'm having a wedding of 50 or 60 people, mm-hmm. but I've got 10 or 15 people at my wedding party. I can now stay here for the weekend. Absolutely. And I don't have to leave here, and then all my guests can come and go, but I can literally have a spot to stay at and get married and go over to King and Prince or Jekyll but on that night for your wedding night. But I can have my friends and everybody stay here. So once again a destination wedding person that's asking a friend to come down and invest, that's a lot of money. I gotta travel, I gotta air, now I'm all situated where I can be here. And that's one of our primary goals is uh, to take a a pretty chaotic, hectic situation and just simplify it, make it just as easy for out of town brides um, as as humanly possible. And now that both the groom and brides, bridal parties can, uh, you know, be able to stay on site. I think that's gonna create a huge amount of value, a big bonus, Uh, we have, our intention is to continue to grow that lodging facility. So uh, five, six, seven years from now, you know, we may be able, be able to sleep 30 to 35 people. Who knows? See, be, and again, on-site parking, so we don't have to worry about parking. It's Correct. all, you have areas for all that. Ample amount of parking. I mean, we haven't tested it yet. Theoretically, we could probably park 200, 250 cars exactly. on this property. And what do you think, maybe this might go to Tiffany, but what, what do you guys think is the maximum people to have a wedding here? Like, you know, you think you have 200 guests, what are, you, what are you thinking ideally? Yeah, there's several different options. So they can get married in either our upscale barn, they can get married in our, our nice, beautiful venue that we have here, but we also have so many locations for outside. Right. Um, and so I think max, I would say probably 250. I think 250 to 300 would be the max for right now. Um, now we can probably get close to 500 people sure. in the event, but they're gonna be sprawled out to the point that is it, you know, feasible as far as mm-hmm. uh, acoustics. And we're going to charge a fee for that. You come after, after 301, <laughs> we're going to charge you to come to this wedding. Right. I so mean, because I, I got to know the budget of a bride putting on a 500 person wedding, yeah. they're going to have to charge Absolutely. 301 coming through yeah. the door. We'll get fast passes <laughs> for the first go. day. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. You know, so, so Tiffany, go back to the process after I click that contact button, and then you're going to get back to them and talk to them. I know it's hard to kind of say how long it might take to book out. But again, we've been in this industry. You guys are gonna open in April. When are you wanting Bryce to start contacting you and booking? Who's gonna be that first April, first April wedding? How are they gonna go about that? Right, so as of right now, obviously, we're taking weddings for next year, which is not typical in the venue industry. You're right. typically booking 18 to 24 months out. And so as of right now, before January 1st, anyone who books with us is actually gonna receive 20% off of their whole package. So whatever they choose with us, And so as you can imagine, 20% off of a wedding package uh, is going pretty quickly. So we are showing um, multiple times a month, sometimes, you know, several times a week, we're showing the venues to new brides and new grooms and people who are wanting to host events with us next year. So obviously I would tell any bride as soon as possible, the very first thing you want to do is get your venue nailed down because everything else falls into place. Um, And so I would say as soon as possible, but we also know that uh, unfortunately we have cancellations and things of that nature. So you never know what's going to open up, but I will tell you, uh, everybody has the opportunity to not just rent for one length of time. So like several venues in the area that will say, well, yeah, you can have the venue and we'll just give it to you for these three days and you don't have an option. For, for this venue, for Cedar Lodge, you have the option. If you just want a couple of hours on Friday night, you can have a couple of hours. If you want all day Saturday, if you want the whole week, you can have it the whole week. And so I think that also has a lot to do with how we book because we could do multiple weddings a weekend if we wanted to exactly. based on the customer's uh, needs. 
And so again, listeners, you kind of heard that, and Tiffany is going to be too proud of a person to mention this, but I hopefully think that you heard this venue is putting people before the prophets because it is insanely crazy to give up a full-blown wedding on a Friday night for somebody who wants to only spend two hours. So again, here's a venue that is all about community. They are going to be doing community events, uh, lots of community events down here. And so you're going to want to get your wedding in here. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to want to come all three days. You're going to want to have a kick butt event uh, when you come down here. There's going to be so many things to do. So that being said, if I wanted to come, Tiffany, and my wedding is on a Saturday, can I come down Thursday and have a bridal brunch or a bridal lunch? They can, that's the customization part you were talking about earlier. If they, in those little notes, say, this is what I'm thinking, and then, of course, you can guide them to some better ideas? Yes, absolutely. So they can, they can have the venue whenever they want. And I know, too, some of the biggest things that you're concerned about at the wedding, especially if you're doing a lot of stuff yourself or DIY, is getting stuff to the venue. When you wake up on your wedding day, you don't want to say, I have to pack the truck and I have to take all my stuff down right. there. You want to just have it there. And so they have the ability, if they want to come Thursday, come on, stay, stay here with us. What you can do is you can store everything on site. We can keep it for you. And then we'll hold that location for you. And it's just going to be you and your family or you and your guests. Yes. And so because we are secluded, we have the ability where we're extremely close to a lot of places, but you feel like you are just yes. here mm -hmm. with nature, with the water, obviously. So we want to be able to customize it. Again, if you just want to come down for the weekend, great. But if you want to come down and make a week of it, if it's a destination wedding, bring everybody down. And what we'll do is we'll make sure that with our preferred vendors, if you know being right here on the deep water, if you want to do a fishing charter, let's get you out there. If you want to go kayaking, if exactly. you want to go, out, if you want a suntan, we have a beautiful new dock out here for you. So whatever you are interested in, we can make happen. Our venue, obviously, if you wanted to do exercise classes or yoga right here on you know the ocean, you can't beat it. Right. And so we'll be able to customize it to whatever they want. So when a couple comes in, again, listeners, this is this is engaged couples. I got to tell you, the fact that you can have a wedding weekend experience. So exactly what Tiffany just said, if you have your groom that's not your groomsman, they can go on a fishing charter and you girls can be doing yoga. yoga. And that is going to be where Tiffany, because she's local here and on site, can help you orchestrate and do all this. Tiffany, tell our listeners and engaged couples and other vendors that are listening in, um, full kitchen, I can come in and I can cook on site. Uh, I'm going to be able to come in and do a low country boil. What are some things that you're envisioning that, that you can offer that's different than other venues when it comes to the food portion of the wedding? Or Absolutely. That? So we have a, it's going to be a beautiful new kitchen, obviously brand new. It's quite large. It has a private entrance on the side of the building with up close parking, has a ramp so that you'll have easy access and it also has um, a preparation station. So you're obviously cooking in the kitchen, but then right next to it, you have a full station where you're able to lay things out. And that may be for food service. That may be for bouquets. That may be for, um, again, service decorators, whatever it may be. And then we also will have uh, drink refilling stations that are all hidden away from the actual uh, venue uh, lobby area. Right. So I think that it's important to, when you're looking at it from a vendor's perspective, kind of like I mentioned earlier, Bobby, there are returning customers. Right. Are these these uh, vendors are the people who are going to work with us sometimes every weekend. Yep. And so we want to make sure that they have what they need, whether it's just as simple as storage, whether it's easy access getting in and out. They are going to be the ones that need all of that again. So it goes back to making sure that that day is special um, and goes off without a hitch. And it is. It's vendor family. I mean, all of us have been in this industry. We see our vendor friends and our vendor fellow boarding pros more on the weekends during peak wedding season than we see our own families. So I can tell you that as a vendor, if I'm a caterer and I'm coming in and I have a ramp and A, I don't have to park 95 miles away and haul everything in a wagon, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to treat you as a vendor more respectfully because you thought about me. And when I come in as a photographer and I carry everything and I get set up, or when I come in as a band, let's talk a little bit about some band options. You have a couple of places that bands can go. Let's talk about currently right now noise ordinance. Do we have to shut down at 8 o'clock on a Friday evening? Do we got to be, can't do anything before 12 o'clock on a Sunday? Are there different rules that apply to you guys that you guys are out here? Being illegal, of course, Tom. Are there some things that you have to do here, like so noise and maybe a liquor license? What's some of those things that are available here? So as far as noise is uh, concerned, being our you know secluded location, we really don't have a noise ordinance we have to worry about. Now we do have one or two neighbors we want to be respectful of, right. so you know we'll be reasonable uh, in the summertime. You know probably live music needs to cut out about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and yep. maybe a little Standard bit earlier in the industry, Yep. Correct. Uh, as far as liquor, we do have a, a liquor law, uh, liquor. Uh, we have to have right. a liquor permit to, to provide and serve. Uh, now the, the client can bring as much booze as they so choose. 
uh, but they do have to have a licensed bartender or caterer uh, exactly. that's going to be here to serve. Exactly. Now we have uh, a local bartender who is licensed that we can provide, uh, but they still they're going to have to bring exactly. their own their Perfect. own whiskey. Perfect. And that's wine. something that people think of all the time. They think they're going to, and I use the word cheapen it up mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. bringing alcohol in here. And Georgia, we, you have got, and trust me. Where you are secluded out here, we're going to want you to have somebody serve you. So it protects everybody in the long run. Absolutely. Um, we'll talk a little bit on that portion. You're close enough. Literally, guys, it only took me 20 minutes. And I live on St. Simons. It took me 20 minutes. I could have got here a little bit sooner, but a little bit with traffic. But if I don't want to drive, we're going to be able to get all the buses, Captain Fendig, you know, Seaside. Everybody's going to be able to come over here and do a normal pickup. So we can, you, again, Tiffany can arrange that. But we're close enough that by car or bus, it's doable. And I think too, what you see with a lot of venues in this area that are secluded is it's extremely difficult to get to. You take a left here, right here, <laughs> you go three miles, you right. know, and not that they're not beautiful venues, but it's so frustrating, especially as someone who's not local to say, I just don't know how to get there. Right. right? And so I think this is so simple. You get off the interstate and you take a left yes. or a right, depending <laughs> on which, you, whether right, you're right. getting off north or south. And then you, you take, you know, a left onto our, or right onto our property and you're here. Right. And that's, that's it. And so it's that simple. And I think part of the, just the convenience of getting here uh, is going to be spectacular. Obviously, you can fly into several airports right. around the area. Savannah, Jacksonville, um, St. Simons, if you have the ability to. Right. Um, and then having all that. But also, the really neat thing about this property is you'll be able to come on by boat. And so depending on where you're coming from, if you fly right into St. Simons and you stay there, you can hop on a boat and come right over. Exactly. Or Jekyll. And so I think that's what makes us unique. Again, obviously, we can run the charters out of here. But if you are abroad and you want to come up on a boat for your wedding day, we're here. And we have that ability, especially since we have the, the open water access. And if you bring that boat, the sunset photos are amazing, people. I mean, mm -hmm. just tell you, bring the boat and let's wave off the happily ever after in a boat. Mm -hmm. You know, Tiffany, go back and now let's expand a little bit more. Bride's dressing room, bridal suite, groom suites. Lots of these venues, when we get out someplace like this, we're having to get dressed off-site, come back, and the logistics of that alone is crazy. Tell everybody how wonderful you guys have built this and what's going to be ready for the brides when they come in. Yes, yeah, so I'm really excited. So the whole second floor of the venue is broken down into a bride suite and a groom suite that are both private. And here's the kicker. They both have a private bathroom. Yep. I can't tell you not only how difficult it is to use the restroom in a wedding dress, exactly. but then also you look like a fool when you're having to do it in public. So, <laughs> so having those two private spaces and in those spaces, they're going to be very tailored. So for instance, uh, if you're coming in as a photographer or a, a makeup artist, you're going to have the lighting you need. You're right. going to have, it's going to be obviously air conditioners. We're going to have that space, South Georgia. You don't right. want to be sweating your, your makeup off here. Um, you know, the groom suite, we're going to have comfortable chairs. A lot of that is going to be leisure for them. But again, it's totally separate. The really neat thing that I'm very excited about, Bobby, is both of these uh, private bride and groom suites are going to have doors onto a private balcony. And so if they want to have just a moment, yep. just the bride and groom, or if they want to step outside and just look at the beautiful venue, they'll be able to do that with a spiral spiral staircase going all the way down to the bottom. And so just that alone, it's just going to be such a special moment. Maybe when we're talking about exchanging letters or yep. if, if you're religious saying a prayer before the ceremony, having that moment, obviously connecting the two. Uh, but then again, if you're not wanting to do a first look, you have that private space and you're going to have everything you need from charging stations. Let me tell you how many plugs there's going to be. Exactly. You <laughs> cannot have enough outlets in a bride suite. If I... Do, do it all over again. Everybody put 25 outlets in, exactly. in your bride suite. So things like that that are just, you don't think about it until you get married. You don't think about it until you're a vendor that, wow, four plugs in a room, that seems ample until you The makeup have, person comes and goes, where am I plugging in? Right. And I think we talked Tom into getting a few USB ports. Yes, USB <laughs> ports. And even something as simple as Cedar Lodge providing charging cords. Exactly. Like that's not something as a bride you nope. think about, but that's something on our end that goes such detail that we can provide those little amenities that actually are the lifesavers. You exactly. know, brides made maybe has a little too much fun and forgets to charge their phone the night before. We have that there. So it's just one thing that just makes the day it's so It's all there. Smooth. And again, the, the vendors then appreciate what's going on. So the women's room, the bride suite is going to be great. When we get over to the groom suite, you know, a nice bathroom for the grooms. They can still chill in there. Again, we're talking Georgia. We're talking South Georgia. Where's the big football screen? Where are we going to be watching the game at? You know, because God forbid you get married on a Saturday in, Sa uh, Saturday in the South. God forbid you do that. I mean, we joke all the time, listeners, those of you that follow us, that uh, 
whenever the Georgia schedule is listed, we always know when we're gonna be busy and when we're not gonna be busy because whenever the buy is, everybody's getting married or if we play a silly team. So down here in Southern Georgia, every venue has to have a big screen TV. Absolutely, both the bride and groom suite will have their own TV. In the, in the case that we need something a little bit bigger or yep. uh, maybe down in the main reception hall, then we'll happy to, uh, happy to accommodate for all the uncles and cousins and brothers that uh, need to get their <laughs> game fix in. Uh, and on the subject of electricity, uh, a thought before I forget it again is, uh, you know, living in South Georgia, I mean, we can be in the middle of a tropical storm like that in the yep. afternoon. You can set your clock by it generally in the summertime. Um, we only have one power source coming out here. It's one power line if it goes down. You know, essentially, we're down. <laughs> uh, we're down for quite a while. Well, that's right. not the case here. We're uh, fully backed up on generator service. In the event the power goes out, it'll only be out for two or three seconds. That generator will kick in, and we'll have enough gas on site to supply power for two to three days to last an entire weekend. So, and that uh, is that, that is, I'm telling you, there's nobody else doing that on this island. We know we're talking about coming up. We got Tropical Dorian sitting out there right now. Um, most of us know we're hurricane season, so you know we fast forward a little bit, and you and you get going, and we're raining. Uh, Tropical storm didn't come. My wedding's still able to happen. So here I am, Tiffany. I'm sitting here. I was planning on getting married outside. What's my other option? Tents available, not tents available. Can I come inside? What kind of a, just a general weather idea that you have for your couple? Absolutely. So we're going to have not only the beautiful venue, but then we're going to have the upscale barn. And so depending on whatever, wherever they wanted to have their ceremony, it's very easy to move inside. So we'll have tables and chairs with the venue. You won't have to worry about providing those. If you wanted a tent location, we can have a tent. What we'll be able to do is we'll be able to provide that for, for the bride and groom. And so we have options. And I think the biggest thing is making sure that they know those options. Right, from the um, go. Because most of the time, you know, you're not going to have six months notice on your weather. <laughs> that's right. something that's going to happen either the week before or the week of. Right. And so as you start thinking, we don't want that panic to be there. So we want to provide those options for you based on what you choose your very first package. These are going to be our rain options. If you want us to the week before, if it's looking like it's going to rain, we'll go ahead and secure a tent. Exactly. And you know what? If if we don't use it, we don't use exactly. it. But we'll secure it just because we want that that peace of mind. Right. And sometimes it's hard to get, but that peace of mind knowing that there are options. And then again, if we are having to move it inside, we'll have a crew for that. If we need to do that, rain delay location or anything like that, we'll move that for you. You shouldn't have to worry about the day of your wedding moving all these things. And so that's part of the reason it's so important for me to be on site, exactly. not only you know during the week, but then also for all of our events, making sure that we provide that customer service just let us worry. Let it, once you make the decision, let us take it from there. So pass the baton. You take take a breather and relax, and let us do the rest. And see, so that's it. You're the wedding director. You have a wedding planner and a day of coordinator, but you're the wedding event director. And that's the thing here. Um, weddings always have to have plan B, C, D, and E because at any given moment, we don't know what can happen. But here, if you choose to get married in July here, and it's going to be standing room 106. I want everybody to know that your venue, when you have dinner, is going to be sitting inside with air conditioning. Right. And we're, we're going to be cool. And if we need some fans, we can have fans. But everybody needs to understand this venue is enclosed with air conditioning. And that is, I know listeners are going to freak out, that's a novelty here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. we have a lot of outdoor venues, and that's what they are. Outdoor venues, and if you get married 140 degrees July, your guests are gone because they're not coming, and you right. plan this great wedding, and nobody wants to come because of the weather. At the same token, we have people that come, and it's freezing cold in January, and we're all happy, you know? So it's the things that you're doing. And I hope listeners hear Tiffany say, I don't have to worry about securing chairs, Unless I want something different, perhaps. Absolutely. But I don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, I gotta make sure I'm in a little more secluded area. And when we say secluded, folks, secluded, I'm not talking a massive island by itself. It's very close, like we told you, 20 and 30 minutes away. But I don't have to go and rent that. I don't have to worry about delivery. I don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, I'm short 20 chairs. Tables and everything are gonna be included in the packages that you do. And again, listeners, that is just something amazing that we have here. Talk a little bit, if you want to, about where you're getting these tables, maybe, and about this massive chandelier that I saw just the frame for. Some of the things that you're doing to your venue that make it unique, but yet still keep it coastal Georgia. So from uh, this venue's inception, kind of the feel we've been going for is rustic yet elegant. And that's kind of been our, our driving motivation behind all the, from the design standpoint. Uh, we also want to keep everything as locally as possible. Uh, for that reason, all of our chandeliers are going to be custom iron work done by Sea Island Forge. Steve Suttle is going to be doing all those for us. The, uh, the tables are all being handmade uh, by uh, 
Fran Ansick, who owns Island Sea Designs. Right. He's a custom wood furniture maker, woodworker, etc. Uh, so like I said, we want to keep everything as local as possible. We want this not just to be a, uh, another business, another venue. We want it to be a, a staple of the community, uh, you know, something that we can all be proud of. Uh, so that's kind of been a driving motivation. Try and keep everything. Uh, we want to keep the keep pumping the money back into our back system. into our community. Right. No, I think that I think that's a very good point. You know, I know we spoke earlier um, off the recording, Tiffany, a little bit about struggles of being a venue owner in general. Mm -hmm. But you guys are brand new at being venues. I'm correct that nobody at this table owns a venue and owns a venue in the past. Correct. Right. <laughs> so some of the struggles, and we don't have to talk about all the logistics and the uh, permits and everything. But has there been any other struggles? that you have, that you might not have thought when you wanted to do this, that you had to think about? Was there far more things to think about that you brainstorm with Tiffany and Tiffany just says, oh my gosh, you gotta do this? The combination, little stepping stones along the way that you're like, okay, this is gonna be a struggle? No, I think the, the biggest challenge uh, from a design and construction standpoint has been how do we create a structure that's uh, beautiful, that's jaw dropping in its own right, but at the same time, it's neutral enough where any client can come in and design it their own way, um, if that makes any sense. Right, no, they no. Have, now they have, it's completely it's different. It's a blank venue. canvas, they, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. How do we create a blank canvas while still making something beautiful in its own right, right. Uh, standalone? So well, that and that's like having the chandelier. When I tell you it's a blank canvas, this chandelier isn't 1920s chandelier that mm -hmm. isn't going to go with a current trend. Um, it's also not, oh my God, that's the old antlers hanging down from a lodge. Because right. I, I don't want people to think lodge as in, mm -hmm. I'm going to go camping Rustic and hunting, hunting and this yeah. is all, you know, Tiffany's not going to let that happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, no. I mean, she's going to be, lodge is going to be a trendy word in 2020 down right. here in the right. coast of Georgia. You're going to want to get married to that no, lodge. No yeah. dead animals in our lodge. Exactly. You're not going to walk up and the, so wait, the groom's room's not going to have all those dead white cows and all that stuff hanging <laughs> where they can take all the wonderful selfies on that social media nightmare for that yeah. right away. Tommy might have to fight me on that one. Exactly. But. <laughs> exactly. But that's what I'm saying. It's you're adding elements that make it unique to the environment that we're in, but it's also not screaming. I got to be coastal here. Absolutely. And I think you can address that Tiffany. Um, I can easily see come, somebody coming in here and throwing shells everywhere and making it look like shells threw up. Right. But the venue lends itself I'm not lying, guys, to a very upscale black tie, if I may say, Southern swore way. Mm -hmm. And I think those are ways that you'll be able to direct your people along with just general ideas. So, I mean, right. some of the things that you would love to see here, like some of the trends or, or themes you would like to see people bring here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think as, you know, anybody in the wedding industry or, you know, event industry, everything starts to look the same. Right. And so you want to be able, like Tommy said, to provide just a beautiful structure that stands in its own kind of timeless sense, but then be able to have it be a blank enough canvas that anybody can come in and create anything they want. And so obviously you have the people who want a beach wedding and that's what they right. want and they want shelves everywhere. Um, but I think at this point you could do anything here. And so what I would love to see is I would love to see somebody from Savannah Jacksonville come into a military wedding yep. here. And I'd like to see us represent that. I'd love to st start representing different couples who have different stories in life. So our LGBT community, you know, our community who's coming in, older couples, newer couples and so I think everybody has a certain sense of what they want and our idea is to help make that come true um, and so obviously you know getting married everything has uh, a fad I guess you could right. say some stuff you know I look back at the dress I wore for my sister's <laughs> wedding um, you know back in the you know, early 2000s and that may not have been you know something that might have been timeless but looking at it you want to always look and say this is breathtaking and right. I think our venue speaks for itself and then the decorators um, and event planners and wedding planners that we are partnered with, um, they have good quality things right. that you are always going to look back at. And so I think that that's something that you can guarantee here. Well, as much as you want as a venue owner for your vendor to, venue to stand out, as as a photographer especially, and, and, and Becca is a social media yes. person, I don't want to really see the venue. Right. Mm -hmm. On the day of the wedding, I need to see you and your mm -hmm. personality. And if you want to come here, listeners, and just leave it the way that Tommy and Tiffany, these guys are doing it, you can have a very kick butt elegant wedding just by bringing no decor here. So that is a very, that speaks volumes for what you're doing here is that I can just show up mm -hmm. and all I have yeah. to do is show up and I don't have to do anything. I don't need, I don't need to have the Mason jars lined up. I don't need to have a ton of florals by now. I need to, you're giving it such good bones. But the thing about it is these bones are not going to be the story. And when I come into this venue, even when I drove up and I saw the construction, 
it's not shouting at me. I mean, it's not, oh my God, when I go inside, I, I can't imagine what this is going to look like. Mm. I want to go inside and see what this looks like. And this is, this is not completed construction, listeners. This is what they have going on and coming in. And so when we talk about trends and in inclusivity, the fact that we are private and more private will lend itself to the LGBTQ plus community very well because we are still in the South and you know things are sometimes a little scary for us, but it's for any couple who maybe just doesn't want to have a bunch of other people looking on. Right. And I'm not gonna have a wedding next door. I'm not sharing the parking lot with somebody, but if I want to come here as a same sex couple, I know that everybody's gonna be safe. I know that everybody's gonna be welcome goes along with if I'm a mixed race couple, I know I'm going to be safe and nobody's going to judge me and we're open and include and that's going to just bring our community together, you know, all along. So Becky, let's go a little bit on the social media standpoint a little bit. Um, what are some of the things that you think couples could start maybe sending you some DMs, uh, yeah. maybe sending you some suggestions? How can they get Definitely. active with your social media right now and Definitely. do things with you? Well, first and foremost, we, we are already um, have received and are constantly getting DMs and inquir inquiries on social, which is awesome. Um, so keep that up. Um, but yeah, also definitely um, we're actually holding a few mini sessions Perfect. at the property. Um, so we'll, we're giving those away on social and we're doing a huge social giveaway. So follow us. Yep. Um, but yeah, DMs, ask questions, comments. Um, I'll answer. Tiffany can answer. Tommy will not answer. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, we don't need Tommy. <laughs> Bobby, it goes to show you when I first met with Becca, she said, if anybody messages us on social media, don't worry, I'll send it to you if I can't answer it. So the very first time we get a DM on social media, after Becca told me not to worry about it, I'm immediately DMing with Becca. So she's like, hey, are you doing this? And I was like, yeah, I couldn't wait. And so I think that's just how excited we yeah, were. Um, exactly. She was only five minutes behind me. It had not been but five minutes since they yeah. messaged. But I think that that comes with, I just want to make that personal connection. Yeah. I want to be a part of their story. Even if they come and this isn't the venue for them, I want to be a part of helping them find that if that's in our area. And so I think that especially on a social media, we're going to be doing this huge conversation contest you'll get edited photos and so you know keep us uh, on your social media timeline yeah. because we're going to be doing that really soon and, and go ahead this time tell plug the plug the social media plug the ig account okay yeah we're cedar lodge on honey creek exactly. um on both um uh ig and facebook um but so we're doing that giveaway but but back to um tiffany's role the the other thing that's great is is that we do talk all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're, if I'm answering your question, Tiffany's either the voice behind that right. or she, we've been in direct contact about that. So yeah, definitely. But I think everybody's excited. They oh, yeah. want to be there. And oh, the more yeah. we talk about the venue, the fastest way for them to look is on this phone. And mm -hmm. again, going back to what you said, definitely. you know what, I don't want to fill out that contact form. It's just going to be an auto reply, right, yeah. but on DM, it's, the generation knows, hey, yeah, somebody's right. going to answer. And even if I get one back that's just a canned response, I pretty much know I have somebody's ear faster. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think right now everybody's following going, hey, I want to take a look at this. What's going on? So I encourage couples, hey, ask, inquire, come out. Oh, yeah. Um, are you wanting to do more site visits? Um, can they go on DM and, and contact you to come mm -hmm. out and give them a tour? And again, kind of still rustic out here. Tommy even sent me an email reminding me to wear closed toe shoes uh, when I came out today. <laughs> but again, I think that's how, don't you, don't you want the couples to come out Mm -hmm. And start looking here, bare bones it, Absolutely. and then be excited about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, we do showings all the time. I'd love to have anybody out, obviously based on their flexibility and right. their calendar. If I can't make it, Tommy, we'll have somebody show you the property when you're available. And I think that's what's really important. And it's fun right. to see mm -hmm. it in the stages. Kind of like if you've ever built a house or if you've ever seen uh, something being built. It's just exciting. And as you walked through earlier, Bobby, you saw all the quotes yep. on the walls. And so you get to see these little pieces of the story. And so I think that's something that a lot of people don't get when they're booking nope. a venue is to actually mm -hmm. see it being made and so uh, we obviously would love to show it dm us uh you can reach obviously through the website give us a call anytime that we can show the venue off and then of course for destination wedding sometimes it's really hard right. to see that venue but you want to feel like you're there and so we'll work on some virtual tours Perfect. for that way we can take that if maybe if we're doing a tabling event at a wedding show we'll have that virtual tour going on our, our table and so i think it's important to realize that not everybody can just 
go to see a wedding venue. Right. And so we need to be able to provide that for our customers and vendors. If we have people coming from across the United States or international, exactly. we need to be able to say, I get that you can't be here. Let me do that for you. Let me show you right. what this and looks like. And a wedding like. planner can come out right now. If you're local to this area, yeah. Savannah and Jacksonville, or even Atlanta, and, and if you don't come here and get a buy for it, you, know, you can look at the great work Becca's doing on social media, but it's not like being here and walking mm -hmm. it. And the wedding planners and the vendors are going to be the ones that are going to say, oh my gosh, right. mm -hmm. let me talk about this and let me do that. And the fact that you're doing a virtual tour can really help somebody come and get the ball rolling in somebody's mm -hmm. head. And you don't know who might have a couple that would fit perfect in here. And right now, I told Tommy coming in, everybody wants to be that first couple getting, I want to be one of the mm -hmm. first ones. I want to be the one to do this and get this going. And I applaud you for, for setting a realistic goal. I mean, I do believe you'll be done and you're not going to be calling that April bride going, Hey, guess what? We got to go backwards. Cause that's always hard. And I think that's the hesitant. If anything, that's what I think couples are afraid of. Okay. You're, ah, uh, you're not going to be done, but you are done, but you've given yourself some great leeway. We're coming into booking season. Um, pretty much from that first little bit of November all the way through February is what we in the industry call booking season because everybody's getting engaged. Down here in Coastal South, July and August are big booking seasons because people come here on vacation and go. Are you prepped for the onslaught of people that are going to be coming? And is there anything you need to tell a couple if they want to date, don't sit around and wait. If you're getting engaged right now, they need to get you on the horn and start planning that process. Maybe tell them maybe just because we're so new here maybe say hey if you call me and you want the date you're gonna have to hold it maybe go that process a little bit yeah absolutely and so i think right now obviously we're we're hoping to open april and start having weddings on site and i mentioned you know if you book before 2020 we'll have that discount and i so i think right now because we are able to um, I hate to say do whatever we want exactly. but make our own rules but it's true um, a lot of that comes down to customer service so if I have somebody calling and saying hey I really want to to book your venue but my significant other is um, gonna be get, only getting two weeks of leave right can I hold this date for just a couple of days absolutely you know obviously if we're holding dates for an extended period of time you know we'll look at deposits but I think like it's not gonna too many venues, I think, are just money hungry. Right. And so it's not going to hurt us to hold a venue for the weekend so that exactly. you can talk to your parents. It's exactly. not going to hurt us if you call us on Thursday and say, I want it, but I want to make sure my grandparents can be there. Exactly. We'll, we'll, we'll pencil it in. And so I think that's what's going to make the huge difference here for us is we get we have the ability to do that. Um, obviously, if we're looking into long-term holds on dates that a lot of people are wanting, we'll look at deposits. but. A lot of that just comes down to customer service. And it's first come, first serve. First come, I hate to serve. say that, but that's how it is. And that's exactly. One wedding a day or one wedding a weekend. If, so yep. if somebody books a Friday, they have Friday. If somebody books all three days, you're not doing another wedding. Absolutely. Yeah, so it is first come, first serve. Because um, I don't think any bride would appreciate walking nope. down the aisle with another bride. Nope. <laughs> so <laughs> nope. it's going to be first come, first serve. And as we are booking up, you know, obviously we talked about our wedding season. So if you're getting married in one of those busy months, it's not going to hurt to give us a call. Nope. Um, I'm not going to be pushy. I want you to have your story and if we're a part of that I'm gonna be just absolutely thrilled but if we're not I'm still gonna be thrilled for you and your story and so I think that's what's important here is if you do choose to inquire or share your number with us I'm not gonna be sliding into your DMs at midnight exactly. asking you if you booked a wedding venue <laughs> exactly. but I just want to make sure that you have all the information you right. need and so again you know you're not gonna get the pushy salesperson on this end you're just gonna get somebody who wants to make sure that you have everything you need and that you what you have is right. And well, so and, and couples know that I think, I think couples now the, the big hot button is ghosting, you know, right. in our industry right now. And I think I remind couples all the time, but I get on it. I mean, I just posted about that last week. Vendors do the same thing. If I reach out to you and ask if you're available, if I have a bride on the phone and I'm thinking of your venue and I want to know if you're available and you go, don't be complaining that the brides goes to you because you got to come back to me. Right. And so if, if, if a couple is coming to you and, and again, I try to teach education here, Couples, the reason sometimes we're pushy is because, honest to God, somebody else does call us right after you call us. Right. And it's not that we're being mean. It's we really can only do one wedding, and the way you guys are setting it up, which is brilliant, you want to be of service, and you want to offer acceptable, exceptional service. You alluded to it a while ago, grandparents coming. Why don't we talk a little bit about the property? Flat, lots of stairs, elevators, escalators, yeah. you know, dropping from an airplane. How, ac <laughs> how accessible is the property going to be? So everything we've done is ADA compliant. Uh, ramps, stairs, whatever you need, we, we can get anybody in, in that building. 
Uh, we are going to have a drive that comes all the way up to the front porch of the venue. There will be a cul-de-sac where you can pull up, drop off, anybody you need to drop off, and then either you can pull back around or we'll have a, a valet or a parking attendant pull back around. Uh, our, what I would call our primary parking lot, which will hold about 18 cars. It's right. kind of specifically designed for handicap and then for the actual wedding party. Gotcha. It's directly adjacent to the, the main reception, to the actual lodge. And then our additional parking, which, as I said earlier, I mean, theoretically, we get probably 200 plus cars. Um, is no more than maybe a hundred foot walk. So everything is right there. You're not having to get bussed in on a trolley. You're not having to walk a substantial distance. <laughs> Everything's accessible and uh, readily, very easily accessible. Uh, and, that's, and again, that's another benefit of being able to come front door service. Yeah. You know, it's that white glove service that you're offering. Right. Well, and it comes with owning 30 plus acres on this property. <laughs> exactly. and so, and you know, something I, I think that people don't think about uh, when you're hosting a wedding is where your parking is located and so it's it's designed specifically so parking is outside of the realm of photos so whether obviously you have oh, a wait wait stop i mean you come down the aisle and i'm not gonna have a headline in me <laughs> right, oh, wait, exactly. wait. How, what anomaly that might right. be right. i have this beautiful setup and here comes a car that's going sorry we're late yeah just keep driving on by the bride's walking right. down the aisle exactly oh and so i think that's so important and obviously we have such amazing photographers like you bobby who know right how to take the photos right. so that the cars don't appear but then we are going to get so much social media hype just by, you know, Beck and I attending a wedding exactly. and we snap a picture on Instagram. And so, you know, obviously we're not professionals, but being able to do that without cars in the background and overlooking the beautiful venue, I think that also speaks wonders right. when you have people who aren't professionals posting photos where it's just the venue. Right. It's not 17 cars lined up, exactly. right? It's not the caterer's tray. Exactly. Um, it's, it's just the venue. And so I think that it's really designed so that obviously we have a valet service if needed for the, the customers, but it's just a little bit off. So it's exactly. about 100 feet, but it's, it's a way enough that it doesn't feel like it's cluttering the, the exactly. venue. But like you said, Tom, you can still get dropped off Absolutely. right up front and, and then you take the car right away. Front. Absolutely. And everything, uh, you know, we are secluded, but everything that is kind of an eyesore is going to be landscaped away. Um, and on the subject of parking, we'll also have landscaped away on the opposite side of the lodge, uh, an area specifically for caterers, florists. So all those vendors will be able to park back up directly next to the lodge. It's a, a short 10, 15 step walk from their Which parking is, area. Which is, again, venue parking lodge. is just, the fact that we can have a spot that we can park and go crash in our car for five minutes if we need to, Absolutely. or do something without being stuck in or have to worry about it getting towed or... God forbid, putting money in the parking meter every every two hours at a right. wedding in some cities around here um, makes it very difficult. So I can definitely appreciate that. Um, maybe, Tommy, you can allude to that. Did you and your wife, when you first started sitting down and talking about it, did you say you had a vision mm -hmm. and you came to that vision? And then did you start reaching out to other, you know, just other professionals or other people to get a little bit of input to kind of listen to, hey, like with Tiffany, I know I need to have a bridal suite or I know I need to have plugs in here, things like that. Did you kind of reach out and just take information from everybody or did like you and Corey go, man, I know exactly what we want to do? We kind of knew exactly what we wanted. We went for it initially, uh, pursued the property. And then once we actually got into the, the process of beginning to design an actual wedding venue, then yeah, we did. I, I started reaching out. Uh, you know, Justin did a great job of putting the GWA together, right. bringing all of us local vendors together. So we reached out to several local uh, GWA vendors and gotten their input, their feedback, uh, as well as just our own research, uh, various podcasts and, and wedding-related websites right. and uh, literature uh, that have I mean, shed a lot of light on some things. Sure. So as we got into the design process, uh, then yes, we did start. Oh, and you learn something assistance. from every wedding. I mean, I joke all the time that our contracts are 25, 30 pages long because mm -hmm. really clause number 44C is from Susie who <laughs> threw up on the outside of the bathroom and right. you go, oh, you know what? I need to put a trash can inside the bathroom. You know, yeah. Little things like that and are things that we learn every single wedding because again, you know, this is an emotional day and I stress all the time that I want to be surrounded on our wedding day team by vendors who are invested back in our mutual client as much as I'm invested. And I do believe that couples invest in people. Mm -hmm before they invest in the business. Absolutely. And everything that you and Tiffany, and even you, Becca, with the social media are doing, but the fact that, again, Tiffany's name is stuck on that at, that is so key, and the fact that I can customize and do anything that I want to do, and the fact that you're, you're coming on social media and you're getting people amped up, and you're getting people excited to come here, and, and some of the things. Was there anybody that told you you're crazy, don't do this? along the way. Did anybody say, oh my God, Tom, Corey, don't do that? Uh, not to our face. They may have been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But you have to be welcome because, like I said, I mean, we need ven we need venues here. Absolutely, you know? yeah. It's, it's blatantly obvious. There's a, uh, a niche that needs to be filled, um, and you're absolutely right. We need more venues, uh, particularly more low key venues. Right. Uh, you know, you have your your Sea Island, your Jekyll Island, right. that are constantly booked. But I think those are in a whole other class. Right. You know, those are attached to resorts. It's a whole other right. whole other ball. Oh, it's, whole whole, it's a whole different vibe. And again, as we talked about. As I'm sitting here, guys, and you know, follow back on the story, and I'll put some stories on my Instagram too. But this is a very upscale place, venue, and you can feel it. There's a vibe here. Um, when I drove down the road, unlike, like you said, I came down the road. It's so peaceful. It's flat, mm -hmm. one little curve, but I have beauty around me. So I think my tone is. I'm not frustrated. Like when I'm driving down and dodging. So when I'm getting ready to come to a happy venue or a happy event. I'm from the minute I turn and I come down to the minute I come in, it's just that whole vibe. And so I think that you have the people that are working here that are going to be able to carry that vibe over. And the fact, again, Tiffany, you said you have a staff to move chairs and do things. Normally it's all of us pulling together and doing something, trying to make it happen. So I just, I think that is just um, amazing. Let's talk a little bit about grand exits. Can we have vintage cars come here? Can we put fireworks off here? Can we have a horse and carriage come here? What's some of the things that we can or cannot do and is it open? I think as of right now, we're open to almost anything. I think when we're looking at something that could potentially be a danger, you know, my mindset, it typically goes to the legal side, which is Tommy knows. He throws out an idea and I'm like, wait, 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 let's, let's talk about the cause this. and effect. Yeah. Let's talk about this legal. So when we're talking about fireworks and things like that, we need to ensure that everything is airtight and that we're being responsible. We are pretty much open to any vision that our, our right. uh, vendors or that our brides have. A lot of it is going to come down to safety. So if there right. has, has been massive amounts of alcohol provided, we may right. want to look at having a professional come in to do the Well, fireworks. I was going to say, and I need to preface that I did not say that. I mean, you're not going to bring your backs from, you know, the, the shell place down the road. Right. You're going to have somebody come in, one yes. of the, you know, one of the pyro tech companies, which we have many down here, yes. and put it off. I, as a photographer, am not a fan of drunk people with fire sticks. That's However, <laughs> yes. you know, and I have the marks to prove it, and there's a whole blog post on my, on my blog about why I have in my contract this is why I don't do it. And if you do it, this is what you better have. Right. You're going to have to have the venue person on site. They have to orchestrate it and you have to have wedding sparklers. You're not mm -hmm. going to get the $1 things where we all die. Right. You know, <laughs> but I do think that we're in such a beautiful place here. We have to be echo. We have friendly. We know we have all the mammals. And I think I saw some manatee signs down here. Right. You can't go just throwing things off no. in, in the marshes. Absolutely. And so we have to be conscious of that and follow the rules and do that. And again, educating couples when they come here and managing expectations. Right. Well, and I think so much of that expectations, you know, a lot of people when they're booking events and they're booking couples, they say, this is our list of expectations. This is our contract. Sign it. Most of the time they sign it, right? Book the venue. But I think what we're missing in this industry is also asking the couple what their expectations are of us. So often we just say, okay, you've signed our contract, you're going to do what we want. And we just go from there, but we're really missing that. What do you need from us as a venue? Right. What do you, obviously Cedar Lodge, what do you need from us in terms of helping you find your caterers or your floors or whatever it is? But then what do you need from me as Tiffany? Like, right. do you need, do you need me to be there with tissues? Do I need to have tissues in my pocket on your wedding day? Right. You know, do you need me to be available for you after hours? Do you want to come out three times before the actual day of the event? What is it that you need from us? Cause I feel like even, you know, in my role in higher education, expectations are a two way street. Right. So if my supervisor is giving me expectations, I expect to be able to provide some in return. So I expect the same thing when I'm sitting with a couple or a business who's wanting to host an event on our property. What do you need from us? Right. Obviously talking about realistic expectations, but just having it be a two way street, I think is something that we're missing. Exactly. That's the industry is missing that mm -hmm. we've gotten so big, so fast and no offense. Uh, no disrespect to you. People are throwing up venues left and right and they're closing down six months later. Right. Absolutely. Because they either got shut down illegally or the reviews are so bad because you didn't have indoor plumbing. We're going to talk about that next. Right. <laughs> what about our bathroom situations here? Do we have inside? Are we bringing in a big, fancy, black tie trailer out there? <laughs> you know, it's everybody wants to know. I'm outside Georgia. Where am I going to the bathroom at? That's a great question. So our lodge, uh, our main reception hall, if you will, has fully enclosed air-conditioned restrooms, a male restroom, female restroom. Uh, each has, I believe, three or four stalls. 
Uh, so no worries. Even the barn going in will have its own private restroom. I was going to ask you that. Is there going to be got to walk all the way back down here, or are we going to have something up no, there on the barn? You'll have something down there specifically for if you got an event down there or, or just taking pictures. Uh, now, in the event that we do have you know a large large event or a large right. party where you feel like some extra restrooms sure. are just, uh, you know necessary, then absolutely. Right. Uh, which brings me to another point. We recently acquired uh, Coastal Latrines, which is a uh, private uh, restroom right. trailer service, uh, rental service. So. And they're very pretty, and they're air conditioning as well. Air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, they, they blew my pretty. mind when oh, I heard about amazing. it. I, I was like, there's luxurious is not a word I would ever use to describe a restroom. But I don't know why they didn't call themselves luxurious coastal latrine. Why did oh. you just call yourself coastal latrine? It's absolutely. Call it luxury. That's I mean, a missed like, marketing opportunity. Exactly. There. I was like, wait, does somebody own that name already? Because that's what I tell people all the time. I'm like, oh, you guys, I tell people that and they're like, oh my God, they pull up. I'm like, look, there are some outdoor venues. I will not remain nameless that <laughs> you only are outdoor, not you can't go inside, but they have these bathrooms built with an air conditioning unit inside it. And on a Saturday, that's where everybody is. Mm -hmm. Nobody's even out here. There are eight people squirmed in the bathroom <laughs> like a bar then, yep. you know, because it's so cool. But that's the thing. So you get this company and you bring it out here and now it's, it's in the middle. If I don't want to go in for a long line or, or I don't want to go inside at all, that's an option you're going to mm -hmm. have. So again, you know, when you get up to 200 people, Tiffany, you might say, hey, add this feature on and we're going to do that. So no, it's a... Uh, that's a beautiful thing. Then the other thing I wanted to ask about a little bit is we answer some of our listeners' questions during our conversation, but one of the ones that came in, I don't know if you saw that, it came in on the, on the Beef Apple site, is can we bring an RV and stay on the property? That's an interesting question. I saw that on the, I know. On the sheet of paper. I started and calling I was like, people. And that's why I'm jumping to you. It was like, that's why I'm like, when I pulled out there and said, wait, we're still building this. How does this person know to ask? Because <laughs> it came from somebody in Georgia. Really? So it could be just one of those venue people scoping you out. Because could at be. this point, Tommy, I don't believe you've never owned a venue before. You're doing everything far too right. <laughs> Somehow you're lying to me about what you do. But I mean, so the question was, can I bring an RV and stay on your property? Like Tiff said, we're open to everything. <laughs> um, there's no specific designated RV area. We don't have the, the power hookups right. and the septic system to uh, you know take care of the waste or whatnot. But... We have an ample amount of room. If you want to bring your RV and park it, then we're absolutely open to it. Uh, you know, I think there needs to be a little bit of an insurance and vetting sure. process so you're not pulling out like Cousin Eddie with the exactly. gentleman on wheels. But, uh, <laughs> you know, within reason, absolutely, we'd be happy to have, uh, you know, an RV or, or even if you want to bring a tent, pitch a exactly. tent. Exactly. I mean, well, that's like out here. I mean, it's like I can see food trucks coming out here. I mean, just anything you want to do for late night snacks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. So, you know, before we wrap up, because we answered, really, really did answer all those questions outside catering, fireworks, we answered our listeners' question, amen. But as we wrap up, I mean, you know, maybe Tommy, you could just, you know, Tommy, just tell us, what are you most excited about? What do you, why can't you wait to get open? And, and really the joy that it brings you and Corey, you know, where do you see this going a couple years from now? You know, how expansive do you want to be? And just why are you excited to bring this to the Golden House? You know, I think it will continue to grow uh, exponentially with our lodging facility coming in. We'll also continue to grow that. Uh, I think the part that excites me the most is the ability to share this, as I'm pointing out the right. window, uh, with the community and with other people. Right. I mean, this is, this is God's country. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to acquire a piece of property like this uh, and be able to, to go into a business venture like this right. in a wedding venue, especially in such a, a busy wedding industry area. Exactly. Uh, so being able to share that with, with the community and with, with our clients it's probably going to be the most rewarding thing for me. Gotcha. Okay, Tiff, you're up, Tiffany. Yeah, I think, as I mentioned earlier, it's just being a part of that story. So when we all look back, we have events in our lifetime that we remember. For some, it's the birth of our children. Some, it's a marriage. Some, some it's an exciting event, a graduation. So being able to be a part of that story, they may never remember my name, but that venue and their wedding is going to be a part of them forever. And right. so getting able to be a part of that story, and even it's, I'm not even there and everything just runs smoothly, that's what they're going to remember. And so being able to, to do that for someone um, and just make it spectacular. Um, and Exceed their expectations. Absolutely, absolutely. And so I think that that is really what I'm excited about. And just, you know, being so passionate, I'm really excited to see the building come to fruition. Right. Um, we're almost there. Um, and then we'll be able to start showing that end goal and start getting right. people in here. And so just being a part of someone's story uh, is going to be exciting. And I'm going to tell, I'm going to, I'm going to expand a little bit. Is, is you guys are definitely, you know, it's the first time I met the two of you. I have met Becca previously, but it's people are going to remember how you are treating them from the moment we walk in the door. You have treated me and been eager, and it's not just because you want to get your business out there. I can see, I can feel, I can sense you guys are really passionate about this, and you want the best for your couples. 
And I go back to the fact that you're, you know, you're going to be just as excited about that two hour small elopement as you're going to be on about a three, four, five day event that comes up. You're going to treat everybody with that same respect and do all that. So, you know, down here, Southern hospitality goes a long way, but you guys are exceeding that. And the fact that, that I know you're just excited about day one as you're going to be on day, you know, 10 years from now. And the fact that you're in this in the beginning, you know, and, and all the people that you're going to be able to, uh, to bring here and just the community events, you know, we, you know, we talk a little bit about all the weddings and events, but you're going to be able to do quite a few things here. And again, mm -hmm. I love the fact that you're writing your own rules. I mean, the fact that you have an owner and a venue person within fingertips to get a hold of is unheard of. I mean, you usually have one or the other and they don't get along, you know what I mean? She, <laughs> I can almost tell she's your work wife, you know, sitting here, you know, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, so that's, that's the part of, of this whole, uh, branding you guys are coming up with and this whole excitement that you're coming up with and I just think everybody in the Golden Isles is going to be thrilled that you're here and I think from the industry standpoint uh, I can already see back at all those of you I can already see small industry conferences here oh yeah um, I can see wedding planners that normally go down to Amelia Island I mean I go on the speaker mm -hmm. circuit I'm, I'm often you know asked to I would rather stay here instead of fly I mean I'm in Kansas City Chicago in a few weeks talking yeah. to a group of people right but I can also see doing small wedding shows here, Definitely. Um, some other Definitely. things, and it's and it's those things that, as you're so good in social media, and as H two O is so good in social media, you're going to keep the community and the wedding community joined. Yeah, but definitely. I can see, you know, photographers coming here doing retreats. Not yeah. even wedding photographers. We talk about you know Ben, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, definitely. and he can do his you know birds and his scenic and anything mm -hmm. else that he does. Little yeah. retreats like that. There's so many things that you can do on the offside of just having weddings and yeah. the fact that you're inviting it to be the community is just amazing. Yeah. Anything else you want to add back on social media front? Anything anybody well, can do to help you? Well, just to answer, um, like Tony and Tiffany did, what I'm most excited for is one, um, we all know H2O loves and, and is constantly trying to recommit ourselves to our community. Right. Um, and, and we just see that so much with Tommy and Tiffany and Cedar Lodge. So we love partnering with them, um, and being a part of their commitment right. to the community one and two, getting to market uh, a venue that's so unlike all of the other ones that everyone knows. And, and from like, the beginning, yeah, from, from the ground up the right. first time the I drawing. came out here, yeah. yeah, we only had the drawing and, you know, we rolled it out and it was like, well, this is, this is what it's going to look exactly. like, you know, so that's really exciting to be a part of, and, and that blank canvas, you know. And especially a marketing meeting person. Oh, I mean, yeah. That, that is, yeah. That, you know, it's probably even more so for visual people like you and I that you see it on paper, you see where well, you guys feel it in the bank accounts and everything else, yeah. but I mean, we're actually going, oh my God, if you just put that there, look how great that looks. Oh my yeah. God, oh my God, that looks even better than I thought about. Yeah, you and know? honestly, from the beginning, there's been not one thing that when I saw that, that mock-up, after seeing it, you know, coming to life that I've thought, oh, it could look better. It's exceeded expectations. I'm just blown away. I said it earlier, this place makes me want to get married every time exactly. I'm here. You exactly. Know? So, and, I, um, and I think that's how it feels for me to me. So Tiffany, yeah. if you had to tell couples something about the venue, what would it be? And if you had to tell, if you can tell wedding pros, what would it be? Whether it be how to work with you or what, or, you know, or what not to do to come here. Why, why would you like couples to know to book you, why they should book you, and the same with vendors, why they want to work here? Um, I think uh, for couples coming here uh, or looking up information on our social media or our website, I just want you to know that we are here for you. So we're not here, yes, making money is nice, yes, we'd like right. to pay our electricity bill, but that's not what it's about. We're here for you. We want to empower each other through our successes and to be a part of your story. Again, if you choose us, I'm thrilled. But if not, we're going to help you. If this is the area you want to get married in and we're your first stop, but not exactly what you're looking for, let us help you. Um, I'm not, you know, obviously going to push myself into your wedding, but let us be a part of helping you find what is perfect for you. And the same for vendors. I think a lot in the business world, it can be so cutthroat where, you know, if you don't get their business, you're frustrated and right. you just want to move on. That's not what we're here for. Everything goes back into this community and so if I Bobby if I see you successful that's success exactly. for me and so I think too often we get in this mindset where everybody is a competitor but we're not we're no. all working together and we're each a piece of that puzzle so you know vendors working with us if there's things that we can do better offer that constructive criticism because then we can do better and provide business back to you and so I think that that's really important is we're all partners in this mm -hmm. nobody's out to get each other we're a team um, we're from a team. the go from the minute from the, the very couple beginning. hired you 
to the minute they hire the rest of us, we're either going to rise together right. or we're going to sing together. And I say it all the time, it is a privilege and honor to be invited to Total Strangers Day, a day that is so important, and then I remind couples, but you're also asking human beings to be a part of it. Mistakes will happen. Right. But as a vendor on a wedding day team, if we see there's an issue on the venue side, to be able to go and say, hey, this happened, and it happens without anybody knowing it, or you know what, the power does go out and two seconds it comes back on, all, we didn't all panic. One of us didn't scream about something. We all right. worked together. That is just above and beyond. And we are in an industry that years ago was more cutthroat, but we have to be, you know, community over competition. Right. And it's a win-win for all of us. And, you know, as somebody who travels a lot to do work, well, let me just tell you, I'd love to sit right here 20 minutes away from my house <laughs> and right. work on a wedding mm -hmm. instead of flying where I've been flying. And I love all my clients. <laughs> that are that, that are listening and follow and all my vendors I work with around. But I, I can just tell you guys that, you know, uh, Cedar Lodge on, on, on Honey Creek, and that's why we named it that, right? Because it's a Cedar Lodge on Honey Creek? Correct. There you go. There you go. I didn't ask that question earlier. Um, but um, it's, it's uh, go there, guys. You know, pick up followings. You know, they're posting. It's right here on social media. Follow along on their journey. Let them become part of your story. They want to be part of your story. I encourage you to write into Becca, to write into Tiffany. Say hi to Tom when you do it. Thank him for doing what he's doing. Uh, but then get out here and let's start making some memories. So I thank the three of you. Before we head off, is there anything else the three of you would like to say to our listeners? Uh, no, we're just grateful for the opportunity. Not only build this venue, but to have you out, give you the tour. Uh, you know, for all your vendors that are listening, we'd love to have their feedback. We've reached out to a few, but it's been yep. so busy, not only exactly. with us, but with them here lately. Uh, in the spring wedding season, that uh, we've only been able to catch up with a small handful of right. them. So any vendors that want to come out just to take a tour, ask some questions, give some yeah. feedback. Uh, like you said before, this is our, our first rodeo in the wedding industry. So uh, any and all feedback, even something as simple as changing the electrical outlets exactly. to the USB style is uh, mm -hmm. more than welcome and much appreciated. Exactly. Especially for our vendors, you're never a burden. So if you just want to come see the property, come see the property. Mm -hmm. So um, you're not going to be a burden for us to come out and show you the property after hours on the weekends, whenever exactly. it's convenient for you. Just come and see it because sometimes it's just interesting to see what's going on. And so again, well, again don't ever, from the ground up. Yes. Don't mm -hmm. ever feel like you're a bother reaching out to us if you're not um actually planning on booking your event just come let us let us show you what we've got going on and then we're gonna have follow along for social media for for a launch event or yes. something yes yeah. yeah we have a lot of stuff in the work but first and foremost be on the lookout for those mini session exactly. giveaways that we're doing in the it's next a huge few contest months. and chime in contest. Yes. and you know yes. again make sure you let them know because when tiffany when all these venue people come over and you say oh bobby told me to come over I want Tiffany just to like me at the end of it when all you guys uh, <laughs> inundate her. So I want to thank all of you, the three of you, for spending time with me today. Thank you, listeners. Um, I'm glad you guys wrote in and wanted to hear about venues. And as always, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled to bring all our local, com uh, local community to our listeners and, and to the Gold Niles Wedding Association. Um, we're all thankful that you're here. Uh, we're glad to have a new venue. I speak highly, I know, from the other vendors that uh, are going to come out and take a look. So again, listeners, thank you for joining us. As always, remember to honor and privilege to do what you do. Everybody have a, a fabo week coming up and uh, follow once again, Becca. Where are we following? We're at Cedar Lodge on Honey Creek on Instagram and Cedar Lodge on Honey Creek on Facebook. All right, thank you everybody. Until next time, everybody be fabo. Thanks for joining us. We hope these conversations will take you into your wedding weekend with a little more confidence proud of what you do and how you serve your clients. Maybe you even picked up a business tip or two. Till next time, be fabulous.